Chrissy O, congratulations, 35 years. Thank you. That's, um, big yeah. congr that's, that's amazing, that's yeah. amazing in retail, yeah. 35 years. I mean, I'm, I think my shoes, you can't see them on camera, but they're from Hunters and Collectors. I think this blue suit is a Hunters and Collector, Collectors item. I mean, I'm pretty much dressed from Hunters and Collectors. Tell us, what are you wearing? Um, okay, so I'm wearing Vetements shoes with a reflector heel from Hunters and Collectors. I'm wearing oh noir pants that are got a, a thread up through here, which is a favourite Japanese designer from here. Wow. And then I've got a bib front, which is a punk image, which is um, Raph Simmons, which wasn't from here. It's kind of quite, yeah, it's kind of grunge gone, grunge fashion yeah, to gone me. sideways. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I, I love the um, punk image, it's really. And the idea, you can wear it down there, you can wear it there. <laughs> Do multi things. <laughs> You've got a quote behind the front desk here from um, Oscar Wilde. I oh think yeah. it must be. One should either be a work of art or wear a work of art. Which are you? Do you think? Hmm. Or are you both? I think I'm both. Probably. You're, you're a work of <laughs> I'm art. I'm going to claim that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't tend well, to. Well, it's been a lot of effort on it. <laughs> Others mightn't call it art, but I do. <laughs> Okay, well, Hunters and Collectors, in a way, does feel like a work of art in itself, or your, maybe your work of art. I mean, it feels like it, you, you put a lot of time and care and love into this place as, you know, an expression mm, 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 just like mm, what you, how mm, you wear. Mm. It's, it's in, a, in that way, not just about selling. No, it's right? totally that. It's like, I remember my friend saying to me once, you'd be happiest when the doors are shut and you were just curating. I'm like, <laughs> true, probably, sometimes. And then one day this guy came in who watched me develop the business and he said to me, finally your shop is dressed like you. And I said, like, oh thank you, I really, ab I appreciate that. Because it, it feels now it's really come to a place where it's got all, you know, the, the points that I really appreciate and obviously customers because we've got yeah. a really good loyal customer base. Well viewers, appreciate. welcome to, this is the curator of Cuba perhaps of all of them, or at least one of the more iconic. So this store is really quite, I, I'd say iconic here among businesses but you started in Auckland right? Yeah did start in Auckland but about a year after starting in Auckland we had one in Wellington as well and we had one in Christchurch so we've always had a nationwide chain. Right okay. But I'm personally here running it now we used to run it from Auckland. Yeah. When did you open in, in Cuba Street? Um, so 1987. Right in 1987 you were seeing a lot of changes out there. Yeah definitely yeah well when we started it was some um, so many small owner operated. None yeah. of the chain stores were okay. here. It was yeah. definitely all owner operated and really cool creative, you know, businesses. And some yeah. of those some of those cool creative businesses, those owner operators, are art galleries themselves. So mm. I'm thinking and I'm looking across to McCleavy Gallery up there. Uh, you and Peter a long yeah. time before he yeah. passed been neighbours and yeah. I remember he always used to say that the coolest art in Wellington was your window displays. Oh wow. <laughs> which was always a really Thank nice thing. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> looking down on yeah. it but I guess it's an example that you know you have always had creative projects mm. here at the moment it's uh, well, the sort of vitrine where you, where you, you sit um, here but you, you, it seems like you really enjoy installations yeah, yourself. Yeah definitely and I, I do it with other people like um, that that definitely help with that, get, getting the ideas and making it happen. But it's one of the things that I really love actually, um, is the curation of the windows and, and the in-store artworks and in the cabinet doing different art things. Yeah, it's, it's another kind of extension of not just doing retail and so tell us product, about, product, product. Tell product. us about this cabinet work. What, what, what was your idea for this work? Well, I must say it isn't my idea. It was, um, <laughs> I got it, uh, the idea from, I went to, um, when I was in London and I went to a gallery there and they, um, they had a Margiela store and, and they had done an entire bedroom. So it was amazing and it was all quilted. So the bed was quilted, the, um, <laughs> there was a dressing table, there was a mirror, there was fish and chips, there was cigarettes and I thought it was amazing. And then the whole clothing range was about quilted bags, quilted boots, quilted clothing. So I just brought it back and interpreted it, it for the shop here. So it's more about, you know, our uh, things that we sell, hats and shoes yeah. and mannequin heads and coat hangers. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things I really love also about the store is the way you're supporting other artists. Um, uh, and you've opened a gallery here two years ago upstairs. Um, and for example, I think there's a beautiful work by Zoe Hall 
which is on the painted steps. Yeah, I love them. They're amazing. Was that part of the, and she's in the leather jacket show mm -hmm. upstairs too, was, was that part of opening the gallery? What's the story no, behind actually, that? No, actually no, but it's perfect that it happened. It was because oh, the, okay. the carpet wore out from so many people going up and down the stairs. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want carpet. I, I'd love it. And I was just saying to Charlotte, gosh, I'd love a painted staircase. And then it was Charlotte's idea. I like, Zoe would be the perfect person. So we put it to her. And then we talked about ideas and we decided to do a dragon because in Chinese, um, it's not, I don't know if it's mythology, but in Chinese culture, like the dragon says that you're the head of your game, that you're the top, the best. And I thought that finally I felt like I could actually claim that. Nice. <laughs> and nice. so we did. <laughs> and then now it's led up to the gallery, which is yeah, really good. Cool. People so love it. They're always taking photos. So the gallery yeah. space is really, really cool. It's been around mm. for only, it's like two years old now. What, mm. what, what, what are you interested in showing there? Um, well, a really wide range, actually. Um, just nothing pedestrian. <laughs> so, <laughs> in, my, in my, my books, just anything that... So we love ceramics, jewellery, painting, photography, leather work, you know, anything that is interesting. And yeah. naturally, and alternative fashion has a peak in there yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I'm open to... To ideas basically. Anyone you know, can approach you? Yep. Anyone as long can as they're not boring and pedestrian <laughs> and kind of, you know. How to say no carefully. <laughs> I'm sorry you're not interesting enough. That's typical. <laughs> well, it's just in our opinion, isn't it? <laughs> Oh now, dear, I'm digging a hole here. <laughs> now the current show is called I Love My Leather Jacket and it's really a celebration of your 35 years because leather mm. jackets were pretty important to the mm. beginnings of mm. Hunters and Collector. Mm. Yeah, that was our... Um, well, it, it kind of wasn't how we started. We started with um, collectibles and then um, my partner um, decided that he wanted to buy a leather jacket. So we bought a couple from the old trade and exchange, which people probably don't even remember now, newspaper. <laughs> and, um, and then he thought, oh, maybe we could sell them, put them in the window. Someone drove past on a bike, broke the window, stole the leather jacket. And he's like, there's a demand. <laughs> 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 which is a, it's a true story. And um, yeah, so then we sort of started and leather was becoming into its own because it was whole punk and rock and you know um, all of that was happening so yeah. the, the leather jackets really had great symbol sim symbolic meaning for lots of different parts of society for I don't know 15 years or something yeah yeah oh well, congratulations yeah. and may we carry on coming and buying yeah. <laughs> our clothing from your wonderful wonderful I, don't, I won't call it a shop because it's far more than that your Enterprise. Enterprise, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, I've got Bob and Suzanne here. Kia ora kurua. Um, we're here, of course, at Hunters and Collectors. How did you guys, I want to hear about your relationships, both of you, with Hunters and Collectors. Where does it come from? What's your relationship with this place? So, oh, well, I'll start. So I yeah. first met Chrissy. Um, I was living in Auckland. I think I was maybe 19 or 20. And she had a, a shop in Simon Street, and I bought my first leather jacket. Oh, her, my goodness. And that was in the 80s, and it was $400, and I paid it off. So that's how I <laughs> met her. And... She was amazing, we got on like a house on fire and I kept doing lots of art stuff and when we formed Pacific Sisters, she was actually one of our main matrons, if I could call her that, so she was really supportive. I was a solo right. mum, going through quite a bit of hard time trying to be an artist and trying to be yeah. a mum and Chrissy bought quite a lot of my jewellery actually, which um, was really helppful and so yeah, she's and she still is really supportive. It's an amazing sisters. supporter of artists, and of she course, is. with your interest in in alternative fashion as part of your art practice, it must have been she must have been yeah an inspiration. Yeah, there. we always have a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> and Bob, what about you? Uh, well, I had had things to do with uh, Chrissy up in Auckland, but my best friend or flatmate at Christchurch was uh, Susie, who's on the poster of um, this show. Okay. And so I had a connection, and she worked at Hunters and Collectors. So I had affiliations, and sort of knew Chrissy a bit, and from a distance in Auckland. And then once uh, she moved down here, I got to be a lot closer. So we've been down here at least mm, 15 years, something, mm. 18 years. Yeah, right, yeah. So, yeah, there's connections from a very long time ago. And you've helped put together this show, I Love My yeah. Leather Jacket. Have you got an affinity to the leather jacket as well? Um, I don't personally have a huge connection, but I just thought it really, was quite resonant of actually hunters and collectors 
you know, personified their presence a lot, their edginess, and, you know, they they were making their own leather jackets in the 90s. Yeah. And they were supplying them to the box and, of course, the lead to the bouncers. Yeah. And these were, like, really Great cool places. Great nightclubs. Amazing I places. I remember them back in the day. I'm yeah. an Aucklander. Yeah. It's all our history. Mm. Yeah. And, and I don't know. And part of doing the show was to try and get other people to understand and realise that small businesses like this have been in business for like 25 years, survived ups and downs, highs and lows. Mm, absolutely. And they're still going and sort of that, that spirit of rebellion, of edginess, of outsider, and also this protectiveness about a leather jacket. Like, they're survivors and they're, they're still here. And yeah. we need to support them, you know, yeah, and celebrate I mean, it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, even, yeah, it's funny that chill song, I love my leather jacket. Yeah. And, you know, the idea of a great friend. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. all kind of fits together, doesn't it, yeah. really? Yeah. And the leather jacket is kind of warm, but it's also tough and yeah. it's stylish, all yeah. those things. And waterproof. Often a sign yeah. of rebellion, though, Wait, you know, you punk or drink whatever. And just wipe yeah. it off. Um, <laughs> and also, we really wanted to try and make the show not about just wearing a leather jacket or painting. I wanted to get mm -hmm. some other two dimensional attitude, you know, emotive sort of works. In there so, as how well. did you? I, I see there's a few artists in here who've been. Exhibited in this space, some yeah. great artists, Stanley Manthing, I see yep. just here. Um, how did you choose the artists to be part of it? Were they all already kind of friends? Of well, there's, and there's connections with the fact that now the gallery's been open for about two years and there have been people coming through, so we yeah. welcome those people back. So we have our own history here now, which is great. And so you put the feelers out and you try and sort of, you know, trying to get a bit of diversity, a bit of variety to tell a bit more of a story. And that's Pretty much, it was people that we sort of knew, or then they knew of someone. And because we've got Charlotte downstairs as well, so she taps into another sort of level of people in the community. Yeah. So um, it's good. And I have people from my film community sort of doing pieces. I just did some pieces just sort of to get in there and do some stuff. What have you, you, know? what have you done? Oh, well, I was oh. trying to do nose to tail turning, like this is a uh, pair of leather pants turned into a bag. Ah. Oh, uh, yeah, came yeah. from Trade Me the sleeveless vest over there. I bought that, uh, took the sleeves off, made them to bags, and he said, oh, I'll just throw the pants in. So he threw the pants in as well. And he had a, he had must have come off because one of the arms was already scraped. And so it was a nice <laughs> bit of history there that we tried to keep. But, you know, this is the, the bum pocket, you know. So it's a bit of upscaling, upcycling. And that was a sort of a, a you know, a thought behind the whole show is it's actually right. you've got to be sustainable. You know. Well, eventually, like this is a leather, yellow yeah, leather jacket. Yeah, that'd make a great bag. Yeah, but one day, yeah, exactly. <laughs> one day, we just cut the sleeves off and make them into a bag. Now I can just have a vest. I've worn this every <laughs> you know, winter for like almost twenty years. It's fantastic. One day, I need to give it to someone to the make the patina it into... and stories that come mm. with what happens to the the second skin of a leather jacket is amazing. Yeah, you know, and that's the whole thing. And I work in the film industry, and we work a lot with you know making something, but then actually making it look like it's fifteen years old or it's been mm. through experiences. Mm. And so that's what attracts me to garments like the leather jacket. Mm. Suzanne, um, you bought your first leather jacket at Hans and Cleethers, but you've done something more conceptual, shall we say, <laughs> as an artist for the show. Tell us about your work for the show. Yeah, so um, Bobsy invited me to be a nice thinking. I actually do have an old Hunters and Collectors jacket and a pair of pants, and I thought, it's a little bit too obvious, and I thought I wanted to make jewellery, because I love making jewellery, out of objects that you would find inside a pocket of your leather jacket. So oh, I yeah. Did um, bottle tops, yeah, check your bottle tops, yeah. bottle tops, um, guitar picks because I was thinking rock and roll, um, cigarette packets and sunglasses. Right. So I just did four pieces, but it was really fun to do, and I think people look at it and they're like, "Huh? Is that cigarette packets?" But yeah, it's good. It's yeah. all recycled, and let people yeah. think about objects. And you know, when we were talking before to Vernon around what constitutes uh, making jewellery worth more than other jewellery. Oh yes, it's been about in that uh, Te Awaha in another yeah. episode of Curators of Cuba. Um, <laughs> you, I mean, you, you see a lot of art around town, Suzanne, and what do you think, like, what is distinctive about this gallery space to you as someone who comes along? I think what this comes with is the space downstairs is so well curated. Um, people come into the shop not even to shop, they treat it like a museum. She should actually charge at the door. <laughs> and Because yes. um, people just come to look around because it's quite famous and She's got such a great aesthetic that just being part of this Hunters and Collectors family mm. is really incredible and it's constantly shifting and changing. Chris is so supportive of Ada, so they're changing the windows, they're changing the um, yeah. cabinets yeah. and it's always like this really crazy eclectic thing but it, it's so so buzzy as well. It really sits well with 
Cuba Street, although sometimes I think Cuba Street's a little bit over-curated. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that Chris is like keeping it real. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Hey, Bob, Suzanne, thanks for joining cool. us. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks, Mark.